Hey there, today is all about tote bags. I'm gonna go through the process to show how I embroider my tote bags. We have some medium ones and even some large ones. So I'll go through from start to finish how I make a tote bag. And then I'll also point out some differences. If you're using a multi-needle with a tubio arm, it's obviously very easy when you have one of these hoops. But if you don't have a multi-needle and you're using a single needle, using one of these, I'll also go through some things. These do make it a little bit more difficult. It's not impossible. I did used to make tote bags before I got my multi-needle, so I'll just show some extra care things you can do to make sure yours come out looking nice. So one reason why I love embroidering tote bags is because they are embroidered on, is because tote bags are a nice canvas stick material, and that means you can pretty much do any design Unlike when you're embroidering sweaters or t-shirts, we have to be mindful of not putting a too dense design on a sweater. Tote bags are perfect for light designs such as this to even more heavy designs with full tummy fills such as these two bags here. So first let's talk supplies. So for tote bags, I use just a simple cotton canvas tote. These are usually tend to be the cheapest kind, but I like them because they are very sturdy. We are using 100% cotton canvas. And then other than the bag, you're just going to need your stabilizer. And for tote bags, I recommend a heavy duty tear away stabilizer. So this stabilizer, I believe is 2.5 ounces weight. So it is pretty heavy and it does have a nice tear to it. So when I'm doing my tote bags with this heavy duty tear away, I will just use one sheet because this is quite a thick stabilizer combined with the thick fabric. All you need is one sheet. If you're using a medium weight or even a lightweight tear away, then you're probably gonna wanna double up depending on how dense your design is. So with all our supplies ready, before we hoop our tote bag, we need to identify the center. So we're making sure our design is straight in the middle. And the easiest way I've found this is rather than taking a ruler and measuring because these are such a thick material, they do fold easily with a nice crease. All I do is I kind of just fold the bag in half on top, open it up, and then do the same thing again from the side. And you can kind of see the crease. It's a little hard to see here on the light bag, but you can see it's more visible in person, the lines here. So then what I would do is I would take some chalk and I would mark on the bag. And on these light bags, I only have white chalk. So if I mark it, it's not really gonna show. So what I like to do is take a piece of clear tape and then I'll place it over the center of where the creases meet. And then with a marker, I'll mark on the tape a little X where the centers meet. And then right before I embroider, once it's on the machine, I wind up the center and then I'll take this tape off and then it'll sew out. On a dark bag where it is easier to see the crease and this one, you can't really see it at all on the camera, but in person I can see it and I'm just going to mark my center. So this will be our center point. So when we hoop the bag, we want to make sure this is in the center of the hoop to align our image. Okay, so now the fun part of hooping. And I'm going to start by talking about single needle flatbed machines, since most people on here probably are using that. And they are the trickiest. So the unfortunate thing about a single needle flatbed is hooping things like tote bags or sweaters are very cumbersome because you kind of have to fold everything out of the way to make sure it's lined up. So I have two sizes here just to illustrate if you're doing a small design or a big design. The bigger the tote bag and the smaller your hoop, the easier it's going to be. So for example, if I'm using this hoop, let's say I have a tiny design, I wanna put it there, I'll unscrew this. And I'm being mindful. So this is the, the piece that hooks onto the machine. So I need to place my hoop this way, so this piece is sticking out. So I'll turn it upside down. And I'm not going to actually put a piece of stabilizer on here because I'm just illustrating, but you would have your stabilizer under there. And because these are thick bags, I like to open up my hoop as big as it goes. And then we are kind of gonna eyeball it by placing the hoop 
right under there. And this, you just kind of have to eyeball it. So I'm going to do the best I can to center this. And then with my top piece, so see, I did fit it in there, but it's not really center. So I'm going to take that out and straighten this up a bit. Okay, so I actually think that looks good. So visual check, I think that looks pretty good. Now that my top hoop is in there, I will come in here and carefully making sure it doesn't pop out. I'm just tightening the screw here. And there is my hoop. So when I'm ready to put this on the machine for the flatbed single needle, we're just going to, we, we want this part laying flat. So you need to fold all of the excess fabric out of the way. So now I have my arm piece here. I put this on my machine and I can stitch the design out. You may find yourself needing to clip back the excess fabric. So I just have a bunch of hair clips. And once I have my bag on the machine, I will fold back as much of this bag here so it does not get in the way. So using hair clips or needles, you can pin back the fabric. I think hair clips are easiest. And then like that on the machine, I would stitch out the design as normal. If you're using the bigger hoop for the single needle, this is the six by 10, same process. It may be a little bit more difficult to turn the bag inside out. So let's see here. I'm opening my screw as big as it can go. And we're placing it under, and then we will line this up. So there my hoop went in, I'm tightening inside the screw here. And then turning the bag inside out, we'll see. Okay, so we were able to turn the bag inside out. This is where it would go on the machine right here. But we have, because it's a bigger hoop, we have less room for the fabric to go. So it will be a little harder to get everything out of the way. Not impossible, but harder. So we wanna keep as much fabric part and because this is such a stiff fabric it's kind of keeping itself up so the fabric if it was a loose fabric it would fall into the center but it's nice because we don't need the clips doing too much work it kind of stays out of the way so there you go now this would be ready to stitch out on the machine the bigger the bag the smaller the hoop the easier it's going to be for the single needle the bigger the hoop then you'll just have to be more mindful of folding the fabric out of the way now for these smaller bags, these are going to give you the most trouble on your single needle. If you're using a small tote and a small hoop, then we're gonna follow the same method as the big bag. So let's go ahead and get this hooped up. So there, we've hooped our bag and then we can tighten under here like so. And then flipping the bag inside out, we're going to just be more careful because we have less surface area. So. Okay, well, as you can see, it is very crowded down there. The good thing is, I think this side would be fine. I don't need any clips because it's holding itself up. We just have the bottom flap here that I wanna clip out of the way so it doesn't get caught while stitching. Okay, so I think that would work. You could also fold these down like that. And then we have a nice flat bottom and the design would be stitched out on your back. A little more tricky with this extra fabric, but not impossible. And now the most tricky way to hoop using a single needle is if you're using a medium small bag, but you wanna use this big hoop because a big design just looks better especially on this side, but as you can see, this bag is not big enough. So unfortunately, the only way you can embroider this size is if you take out the side seams. 
I know that might be a little bit of a disappointment to you, but this is something I used to do quite a bit. You have to take out the side seams and on the bag, I would just come in here and you can see they're pretty easy to see. On the inside, there's no lining on this bag. So it is a surged edge here. So you would go along and take out the side seam all the way down on both sides of the bag. And then you'll be able to essentially lay it flat. And then you would embroider this just as you would a flat object. You can place it this way and you would have room to hoop your item. I don't have an example of a bag with the removed seams, but it is a pretty straightforward process. It's easy to do, but it's just time consuming. And then after the design is finished stitching out, you would need access to a sewing machine and ideally a serger where you would sew back up the side seams and then for extra protection, you could serge it or just use a zigzag stitch. So that is how to hoop using a single needle flatbed. Now let's talk about using a multi-needle, which is a lot easier and less cumbersome to do. So if you have a multi-needle, you're either going to be using the mighty hoops, which make it super easy, or these standard hoops, which are not as easy as mighty hoops, but easier than doing a single needle flatbed. So I'll start with how to do the normal hoops on a multi-needle. So your hoops will look something like this. I'm going to be using this one. This is a little too big. With these hoops, we're just going to open them up and it's pretty much identical to how we hooped for the single needle. We have our bottom hoop here. Turn this upside down. Let me just stick it in there, get it centered. And then with the top piece, we lay it on top and kind of put it in. So we have it in there and then we tighten the bottom hoop. And there's our hooped item. Now, unlike using the single needle, we do not have to turn this inside out because on multi-needles, we have the tubular arm. So we're able to just pop it on the machine like this. It goes onto the machine and stitches out just fine. Now with the Mighty Hoops here, this is going to be the ultimate recommendation, but I know these are expensive and not everyone can get them right off the bat, but just to show you real quick, the Mighty Hoops make things super easy, mainly because once you put it in the bag, it snaps on very easily. You don't have to adjust any bottom hoop. I have my bottom in and then I will put my top piece and then this is ready to go on the machine. But if you're trying to embroider a very big design on a very big bag, that is where the Mighty Hoops really do shine. So for this design, I use my biggest hoop, which is 14 by 16 inches. So just to show you how hefty this is, this is my hoop here. So these big bags, even with the Mighty Hoops, can be tricky in order to line up your design properly. Just to illustrate how this works, because as you can see, when I place my hoop over the bag, it doesn't quite fit. It's a little too tall. We are going to have some excess stabilizer that's not covered by fabric, but that's not a problem. So since these are a little tricky, I'll show you the process with stabilizer and everything. We need to turn this bag upside down. And this bag has like, a, it opens up at the bottom to give it some depth. So I'm going to pop that bottom out because I will have my hoop coming down here. And the hardest thing here is with the stabilizer, making sure it stays put while I'm trying to hoop this. So what I actually do is I will tape my stabilizer to the bottom hoop so it doesn't move around and cut around the edges. I know for the Mighty Hoops, they make special stabilizer holders that will do the job for you while you're hooping, but I didn't want to have to pay for one of those. So I thought tape gets the job done. Let's do that. So I have my stabilizer cut a little bigger than the hoop. I'm going to place it on top. This is where the opening of the bag will be. This little part sticking out. I'm first going to tape that so it doesn't move. And then I'll cut around the edges close to the edge. Okay, so I've done a rough cut of the edges. Now I'm going to tape the sides so the stabilizer doesn't move. 
I'm going to rotate this so I can do the top edge. And then tape the top edge. And for the bottom piece, I'm also going to snip the corners here. And we're going to tape the corners down. Okay, so now my stabilizer is not going anywhere. When I stick it into the bag, it will stay in the right place. So that makes it a little easier. So bringing our bag back, we have the bottom part pulled out. And then with my stabilizer taped to the bottom, I can just slide it in here. And it's not shifting. The tape is keeping it secure. Once that's in, we'll eyeball it to center it as best we can. So this design here does not take up the entirety of the hoop. So even though this is the bottom piece here that's, that the bag sits on, the hoop will be coming here, but our design is only stitching in the center piece. And we do have some of the hoop sticking out here, but because I can't stick the hoop in anymore, we are leaving this out and it will be fine since the majority, the rest of the bag is attached. So with my top piece, make sure it's in the right direction. I'll place the bottom first and then lay down. Now we have our bag hooped. If we look inside, we can see the thing is caught underneath and then this is ready to put on the machine. And that's pretty much all there is to hooping the various types of bag sizes, hoop types, but I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this one out so you can just see what a finished result looks like. So there is the finished tote bag. So I hope you found this useful going over all the different techniques you're using, whether you have a single needle flatbed and the type of hoop you're using. So thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.